My family took a vacation to the Holy Land. No, not Israel and Palestine. To Nashville. (laughs) I had a religious experience when I went to the RCA Studio B. In 1957, on Roy Acuff Place, the Nashville Sound was born as the RCA Studio B, known for the home, known as the home of a thousand hits, was born. There's a little X on the floor right next to Elvis's piano, where you can go and look at where all the titans of music stood there and changed the face of music forever. Chet Atkins, Waylon Jennings. Dolly Parton, the Everly Brothers, Willie Nelson, Patsy Cline, Elvis Presley, Buddy Holly, and, bow your heads, Johnny Cash. (laughs) But it's not the X on the floor that makes all these people special. It's they themselves who stood there and changed the world forever that makes the X a special place. When I listen to their music, when I put on my dad's Patsy Cline records, I'm transported and wish I could go back in time to be there as they were all recording. I also did go to Terra Sancta, the holy land in Israel and Palestine. I went to the bank of the Jordan. The river Jordan is the border between the country of Jordan and Israel, and I put my feet in that water. I didn't want to get in because it was cold and dirty. But at that very spot in 33 AD, John the Baptist baptized our Lord. And it's almost like I could be there on that spot. It's almost like I was transported back to that moment. And then on December 6th, 1990, I was born. And then on December 23rd, 1990, I was baptized at St. Jude's Catholic Church in Cedar Rapids. This is my baptismal candle. When I hold it and I look at it, I think about and I'm transported back to that moment when I became fully Christ, fully belonging to God and fully washed of my original sin. Now, even if you can't travel to the Holy Land, travel to Nashville, travel to Israel, Palestine, or even time travel back to my baptism, you have a way that participates more deeply than all these could ever participate in. And that is by simply what you did when you came in here. You dipped your finger in the holy water font. That's a reminder of our baptism. That's why we have it. Because our baptism is the most important gateway that we have to holiness. It's what starts the whole process. I often wondered when I was little, why the heck are we reading about Jesus being baptized? Why did he need to get baptized? Shouldn't he's God? Why does he doesn't have any sin to be forgiven? And that's exactly John's thought process. That's what he thought of. Why am I baptizing you? But the thing is, it's not the water that makes Jesus holy. It's Jesus that makes the water holy. Every single aspect of human life has been purified, redeemed, and made holy by Jesus participating in it. The very fact that you were baptized, were born, have life, the very fact that you are going to die and then be raised up to eternal life means that you existentially participate with Jesus. Say that with me. Existentially participate. Your very existence as a born human, as a baptized Christian, means that you participate more intimately with Jesus than any Patsy Cline album or any traveling to the Holy Land could give you. You participate in all seven sacraments as a faithful, even if you don't receive them all. You particip- if you're married, you're participating with Jesus, not because he was married, but because he spoke highly, gave teachings on marriage, and went to the wedding of Cana. If you go to that sacrament of confession, you are participating intimately with Jesus, not because he himself had his sins forgiven, 
but because he forgave sins. I and my brother priests get to participate with Jesus in the sacrament of holy orders. Not because Jesus was ordained a priest, but because he is the source of priesthood. The same way Jesus must have got sick and he was healed. And so we have the sacrament of anointing of the sick. We existentially participate with Jesus in all aspects of human life just by the fact of being there. You have to like classic country music, then you have to listen to it, and then you have to go there if you want to experience and touch that mystery. You have to have the money to travel to the River Jordan, and you have to be interested in that to actually go there and get something out of sticking your feet in that river. But whether you're interested or comfortable with it or even care, the fact that you are born, baptized, will die, and will be raised is the greatest participation that we can ask for with our Lord. And he doesn't stop there. He gives us his body and blood, which we'll experience on the altar in just a few moments. Not only are we participating with him, we are becoming one with him. And this is the kind of growth, this is the kind of truth that will lead us into this ordinary green time of growing. And so as we go forward, ending the Christmas season of joy and now starting this time of preparation, let's keep in mind that we participate with Jesus every time we dip our fingers in the holy water font, every time we do something in life to give him glory, and every time we receive the Eucharist. Your homework is to ask your parents what they remember about your baptism. Look up your baptism date. Uh, It'd be nice, sorry, uh, secretaries, but uh, you're going to have a lot of calls this week at the churches because everyone's going to be calling and asking for their baptism date. All it is is just a simple phone call and look up the record. I celebrate that day every year like it's my birthday. So that's your homework. May you go forward. May we all go forward and experience not just participation, but true unity with Jesus in his baptism, in his body and blood, and in his saving mystery. Amen.